Well, a very good evening and welcome to the blue skies of Canmore in Canada for the next round of the Cross Country Red Skiing five, World five, Cup five. races. Uh, not too chilly, minus five. I think the racers be able to cope with that. Uh, wind off in the issue in this part of the world, Mike, and a, and a part of the world you know quite well. It's a wonderful part of the world. It's um, and often the temperature drops down below minus 20, sometimes down as low as minus 30. So at minus five today, it's pretty good. And the tracks, as usual, so wide and, and pr so well prepared. Well, you can see everything you need to see there. It's the ladies' mass start, 10 kilometers the distance. Now, uh, it's a mass start, but the best get seated in the front row, and that could prove crucial. It's not a long distance for a mass start race, and it will take uh, it will take those at the back some time to work their way into a position where they can challenge. The four laufers just completing their uh, lap. We're going three times around a 3.3 kilometer loop just to make up the distance. That's good news for the uh, well, it's good news for the spectators. Some, there are some athletes there that like to disappear into the woods. Mike and uh, just dream away as they uh, knock off the case. Well, it's certainly for the cameras and as you say, the spectators, and they really have flooded here as, from as far away as Calgary, what, well, one hour away. They're desperate to see these international racers. Well, there are plenty of local races as well, as you can see from uh, that uh, particular caption. The host's always entitled to enter more. There's Keegan Randall. What form is she in? And, of course, she's a local girl. Uh, she won last week in Quebec. She'll want to win here again today. Has she got it in her? Well, uh, she's going to have some tough competition. Vibeka Skofterud will be tough to beat, but she's never won. And this would be a fantastic day to try and do that, with Marit Bjorgen and Therese Johaug sitting at home in Norway preparing for the Tour de Ski. Holly Brooks, one of four Americans in the top 30 of the World Cup standings. That's a statistic that we haven't come up with before this season. And uh, so well done to them. Shdara. Well, she's won twice, both in mass start races. She likes the pursuits particularly, Mike, but she's also good. She's tactically very good. But this woman, I can't remember the last time she was beaten in a 10-kilometer classic. A part, of course, from uh, Kusumo. <laughs> and I think with with her relatively uh, poor start to the season, she will want revenge today. And, of course, Marit Bjorgen not here, so she's going to fly. Are we going to see a different nation on the top of the podium? Japan, Masako Ishida. She is very, very quick. And we're going to find out a little bit about her competitive nature today as well. Well, the uh, Germans have Katrine Zeller and, of course, Denise Hermans also looking very strong. Those two could go well together. And Stephanie Buller there, number 15. 16. Anna Haag. The Swedes still missing Charlotte Kalla, who uh, I guess is doing exactly the same as Marit Bjorgen and preparing for the Tour de Ski. That uh, is uh, a much sought-after title this year. So just moments to go before the start of the women's 10K. Again, you want to bring it in. Keep moving those skis. Slide, side to slide. Don't want them uh, in any way to ice up or anything. The, well, the uh, classic, so uh, classic race ensures that everyone has wax under the skis that's why they're all uh, they're not nervous they're just trying to keep the skis moving to stop the uh, base icing act the wax on the base icing up uh, if that happens they're in all sorts of trouble and uh, well i guess you're in a, in a race of this sort of distance uh, your race is over if you've made a mistake it Absolutely. It's interesting. You don't get this over in the European races where the, the starter will tell you to keep your skis moving in case they, they clog up. But it's fair comment. If the first athlete drops down, then uh, there's a bit of a roadblock. Hopefully that won't happen. That's Alison Marshall of uh, Canada at the back of the pack. So uh, along the front uh, row, Ishida wearing seven. Six is Stephen of USA. Kowalczyk, you'll know, from Poland, wearing number five. Stara for Norway, four. Brooks of USA, three. Viveka Skoftrud on the far side with the buff on. And then on the far side of her, Keegan Randall as well, wearing one. So away they go, and it will be fast and furious for the first, uh, certainly for the first 500 metres. And uh, out of the Olympic Stadium. And time just to settle into their rhythm. Randall obviously going hard in the middle in the black suit. She's desperate for a good position out of here. And then I think uh, she may, may well try and control this race. But there's one factor, the Kowalczyk factor. Well, Kowalczyk, she started off with uh, such intent. She's there. Uh, middle if you like bib five in red 
and uh, you just get the impression this is her race strategy will be to push hard and try and break and lead this it's only 10 kilometers so she'll try and attack it hard now from the start yeah the thing with Kowalczyk is if you decide you're going to sit on her shoulder and try and match every move you know she will make her move on the steepest hardest bit of the course and that's generally where no one can stay with her so if you want to beat Kowalczyk I feel Mike you've got to employ a different tactic you've got to go particularly fast on the flats and the technical downhills try and open up a gap and make her work to catch you on the climbs that, that's the absolute best strategy but I also wonder the rest of the field they've seen Kowalczyk this year what in the first day skating race one minute 20 behind Marit Bjorgen she was down in 17th so they now view her as beatable and that will spur the rest of her main opposition on but it's not the first time that she's not been on her very best form at the beginning of the season I think she knows that she's she's not capable of staying on peak form from uh, the end of November right the way through to the end of March and in fact no one can really do that at the level that she competes at and so maybe maybe the first couple of weeks of the season we're all about warming up maybe right well certainly and uh, of course uh, Kowalczyk had that knee operation remember she she was in pain at the tour de ski but she kept pushing through it and uh, she, she was supposed to stay in hospital for 20 days she said no how can I continue training <laughs> when I'm in my hospital bed let me out and that's her mentality isn't it to push hard all the time yeah there's a lot you can do without uh, use of the knee as far as training goes and uh, cross training never did anyone any harm particularly in this game I'm a little concerned, Patrick, for uh, Keegan Randall. She's well on the left column as we look at the screen. And in third place, her glide down that little descent there uh, certainly wasn't very good. Yeah, that uh, could be a bad move from the technicians in the USA team. Randall on the far side wearing one. Number 11 going through, that's Katrin Zeller. And the Germans, no mistakes from them in these early stages. Now, there aren't many races with a backdrop of the Rockies, Mike, but it is truly spectacular. And, uh, well, many days training and racing here, you don't see the top of the mountains. But today, if the athletes uh, dare look up from their ski tips, they'll see uh, the most fantastic sight. Now, although it was a few years ago, you must have good memories of this place as well from, uh, from the Olympics. Well, 88 was, uh, <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, should we say. But what, what, I, what I do remember is, is the winds that uh, sweep through this valley. Uh, I think they're called, they're called Chinooks or Fern Winds, uh, one or the other anyway. Chinooks, yeah. Chinooks, I think they're called, and incredibly warm. And you can watch the snow melt in front of your eyes. So although you have good covering the day before, you're never assured uh, 100%. But uh, the track's in good condition. They've been working hard on them. And uh, a delight to ski on in the classic style. 1985. Before that, everyone skied this way. Now, of course, uh, most kids prefer just to put on a pair of skating skis because it doesn't involve any preparation. Well, the preparation and, uh, for this to get the, enough grip, these are very steep inclines that you'll have to ski up and you need to grip. You're just not going to go up a hill without grip under those skis, but they also need to glide as well. So it's the combination of getting the right amount of stick and the fastest glide possible and the technicians have spent hours today trying to get that just right for the athletes well just slowly very slowly the pace the leaders are setting is starting to string this field out we've got a field of 66 and uh, we've got what 10 11 canadians who are club skiers at the back getting their first experience of racing at world cup level we may well see. We'll try and pick up on a few of them as we go through, Mike. They're all uh, numbered 56 through to 66. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw one or two of them making a good effort on the first couple of laps. But just, just getting news, sorry, Patrick, that uh, it, surprisingly, Elizabeth Stephen, very good uh, American skier, and uh, Jessica Diggins uh, uh, not started in this one. Yeah, and Elise Brocard of Italy has also withdrawn late notice there. That's uh, a real shame for the American team in particular. Now, who's struggling? If you look for the low, lower numbers... Number 28 has uh, dropped down through the order. That's Slonova for Kazakhstan. 45, and starting to drop off the pace as well is Elin Molin for Sweden. The French suit you'll be well familiar with, the black and yellow. Caroline Hoog is uh, now some 200 metres 
behind the race leader and I think uh, that distance is just going to grow and grow as this race goes on. When you look at the clock now that's nearly what just under six minutes and the main theme has been climbing so the early part of this course it's quite brutal and then it, we have the long descents really from uh, 1.7 kilometers uh, into this race you're, you're generally climbing all the way then it's a uh, a good drop-off from 1.7 kilometers down to 2.25, mostly downhill, before a final climb and then a descent again into the stadium. So bearing that in mind, Mike, and it is quite a stiff climb, as you mentioned, uh, do, you, do you think we're going to see a break on the penultimate lap from the chances? And then uh, will Kowalczyk uh, save her best for the third lap? I think, uh, well, there's the bonus sprint, uh, the bonus sprint, I should say, and uh, that's the next time round out of the stadium. And that's really going to change things, going to, going, to, going to dictate a break. The top 15 gaining points with the highest uh, getting 15 down to one point. For the BMW trophy. And uh, there will be those who don't feel they have a chance of winning the 4x4 four four at the end of the season, so they may not try. Now they start to build the speed as they come back down towards the stadium. Here's the first of the technical turns, and this uh, is where Kowalczyk may struggle. That was better from Kowalczyk. Nice uh, rhythmical step turn from her. Normally she'd struggle, but this, this crisp snow at minus five, minus six. Uh, no difficulty getting the skis to grip, and uh, Kowalczyk safely round. And there she is, leading the way at the moment. On her right-hand side, Vibeka Skofterud of Norway. Number four is Stera for Norway as well. And uh, 27, making up fantastic amount of ground. Is it 27 or 22? It certainly it looks more like Osterberg in the Norwegian colours rather than the. Uh, it's certainly not an Italian. So it will be Osterberg on the far side in fourth place at the moment. And a good start from uh, Anna Haag. This is the first race we've seen Anna Haag since Yalevaro, which was the start of the season. And uh, Haag just. You can just see her ski tips in the left of your picture. She's from Mora, which is the uh, town where the Vassalopit finishes. It's the first faller. No, don't tell me that was a Shida. Oh, Certainly was I, the Japanese I suit. I think it was a Shida. What a pity. Bit of a careless error there. It is a fast corner. You need to give yourself a little bit of space. But uh, if that was a Shida, she certainly lost, what, 20 seconds by the time she gets back up and starts from zero momentum again yeah it's much better to fall on the uphill than the downhill so under the bridge and again the downhill continues now if you're going to get away you've got to make a substantial break by the time you get to the top of the hill because the pack will come down quicker than a lone body just the same as on a bike but uh, the speeds aren't quite as big. Kowalczyk fully recovered now for her next effort. I think this course is going to suit her down to the uh, ground, Mike. There's Holly Brooks wearing three, just gone through. That's the Italian suit there. Stylish as ever. And Ashida uh, has lost some 30 places with that mistake on that uh, left-hand hairpin bend. And she's... Uh, I guess she's a little bit fortunate just coming into the uh, start of the tracks now. Kicking Randall still in this lead, uh, what, 15 we have in the lead group. There's not much separation. In fact, you get a feeling that it's going to, they're going to rejoin this lead group, well, they have already. Do you think Randall's gone slightly heavy on the wax to make sure she's uh, got the grip? Number seven, that was Ashida going through. And uh, the other Japanese, uh, it could well have been Kobayashi, actually, who went down, Mike. Well, hopefully we'll get another replay to see exactly which one it was. Stephanie Buller up there for Germany and uh, good performances from them so far as they start the second lap 9.52 on the clock at the moment and so we're looking at a winning time of around 27 minutes maybe a little bit slower than that 28 and a half 29 i think uh, i think we're unlikely to get negative splits today that's true i love these mass starts where you can see exactly how it's unfolding and i think they really do give more athletes a chance to fight. It is easier when you see exactly where you stand in the race rather than time trialing. Well, there are the big names up the front and uh, no casualties so far. Randall, 3.2 behind, well positioned. 
I guess, Mike, you really want to be in the front five to avoid uh, any of the concertina effect. An ominous gap of four or five metres opening up between Kowalczyk and the rest and starting to uh, try and pull them back. Jessica Diggins... Uh, In there, I wonder who's going to be able to be brave enough. They may resign themselves to the fact that no one can stay with Kowalczyk on the uphill section, Mike, and that would be uh, a shame if it didn't go round to the third lap. It would be now. I saw Shevchenko putting in there. Of course, ah, she's Shevchenko, around Valentina yes. Shevchenko. She's putting in a turn of pace. In fact, there she is in third place at the moment. So good to see her form back again. Yeah, Shevchenko, a really good uh, classic skier. There she is uh, in the blue. Uh, she's uh, won the overall distance World Cup in the past. She's never won the sprint, never been much of a sprinter. But she's very light figure, and uh, her forte over the years has been the climbing. And this is a true test of climbing from the stadium once again, and that's where Kowalczuk's strength relentlessly just hurting the rest of the pack. We've almost got a three-athlete separation just by a couple of metres. Styra there, good at climbing as well. She's just had a little look over her shoulder to see where the rest of her teammates were. I bet she expected Skofterud with her at this time. Skofterud struggling, uh, number two. She's on the outside lane, so she's going some three or four metres further than anyone else. Uh, not a bad thing to be thinking tactically, even at this stage of the race, Mike. Try and take the inside line on all occasions. Add the, uh, add the corners up come the end of the race and you can save yourself 50 metres. On these wide tracks, absolutely. Look how the, the disadvantage of going wide is unnecessary. Well, the first bit of the hill was just uh, a warning, I think, to the rest of the field. And now Kowalczyk goes again, showing us that uh, her form in Kusumo was uh, certainly not a fluke, but... She could be, she could be going for the bonus points for the BMW 4x4. And uh, I, I can just see Justina dri <laughs> driving around Poland in that. I think she'd enjoy that. And if that's the case, Mike, we might see her get to the checkpoint and then just ease off again. She might, although I, it appears she's doing a lot of damage to the rest. So here's her opportunity for an advantage. 50 metres to go for these 15 extra World Cup points. Well, Shevchenko, it is sitting in second place at the moment. Is she going to make a dash for the line? Now, Shevchenko, really, you'd want to cross over the tracks and try and get in behind Kowalczyk. Very bouncy style of Rocheva, number 21. What they're trying to do is compress the ski onto the snow to get the grip. And... Uh, the more the wax wears away, the more compression they have to put through the ski and onto the snow. And uh, so those who are skiing smoothly generally have got the wax absolutely right. Well, back down to the bottom of the hill. And uh, Kowalczyk, for me, Mike, seems to be skiing very smoothly, even better than last year. There's, there is. There's limited movement. Her hands generally don't... It is steep terrain. Don't come behind her hips compared to some of the Norwegians who try and get that, that more of an extension, more efficiency on the glide, but Kowalczyk seems to have such a work capacity, she just keeps plodding on. Well, there are the bonus points that are awarded, and we've got uh, a number of events all the way through the season. And a couple in uh, Kusumo, the women's classic sprint was part of this. Uh, we've got the 10K. And then uh, we've also got the skiathlon that has uh, intermediate points as well. So uh, those who haven't come to Canada have uh, pretty much ruled themselves out of uh, winning that competition come the end of the season. But most of the top names will uh, not be short of a penny or two. They'll be interested in winning the overall World Cup. That is so much more important. And, of course, the Tour de Ski, which we've talked about. Now, Mike, that starts again this year on the 29th, I think uh, I'm right in saying, 29th of December, right the way through to the 6th of January. A slightly shortened tour this year. Uh, I think that's so that the people who win it aren't completely worn out for the rest of the season. Well, that's right, and with, with the World Championships in Val de Fiemme coming up uh, towards the end of February as well, 
I suppose it does allow for, what, six weeks, five, six weeks to, to have some recovery time and then build back up again for the World Championships. But I think the Tour de Ski, what, this will be its seventh year uh, running. I think it's great, I really do. Races every day. Well, she's got a little bit of daylight between herself and the rest. Uh, Shevchenko is now in no man's land, stuck between Kowalczyk and the chasing pack. And I'm not sure that Shevchenko is going to be able to stay there with the faster descent of the group. But we'll see if that's the way that it turns out. As they go through the uh, top of the climb, five kilometers completed. They're halfway through this race, but they have done the big climb twice. So uh, they'll feel like they've done more than half the work for today. Now, Kowalczyk, as she gets more tired, I wonder whether that left-hand corner is going to be her undoing. We've seen her fall in sprints here before. I think she fell just before the Olympic Games, actually, when uh, they came a lot of... They had a World Cup here in Campbell just prior to the Vancouver Games. Well, the one certainty at the moment, Kowalczyk, here she is on the, on the tight left-hander. She's got plenty space. She should be able to cope with this. Good. Really good. Confidence to stay on that outside ski. Shevchenko, no problem. So we're coming up towards the completion of lap number two here in uh, Campbell. 9.50, uh, in fact, slightly under that, about 9.35 the time for the first lap. So we're still looking to be under 20 minutes, and I think they should achieve that. Liebeke Skoftrud on the far side. Lots of lean with that upper body. I like the way also you can see it on her right leg, maybe more so she just pushes the toe in almost in front of the knee to get maximum reach forward and then a very sharp compression to get the grip, pressing the curve of the ski onto the snow to get the grip. But uh, I don't think anyone's gonna catch now Kowalczyk. She's really suffering right now. She's living with the discomfort to try and, I think, do more damage to the rest. Yeah, if she can take a 50 meter lead into the final lap, I think they'll really struggle to catch her on the uh, uphill. And the rest perhaps settling for fighting it out for second place here today. Shevchenko still hanging on to uh, second and looking good at the moment. Only two of the leader or the better Russians in this group. I, th I think Rocheva is closing in on this group as well. Well, take nothing away from Justina Kowalczyk, but I think she has one fantastic pair of skis on her feet today. She's opened up a lot of time on the, uh, on the descent back down towards the stadium. As we come towards 6.6, .6, they've had about a kilometre and a half of predominantly downhill. So uh, for Kowalczyk to open the gap up to some 60 metres, she's done a great job. So we'll get another split time in just a moment. 19.04, that was far quicker than the first lap. What do you think we're looking at? 28, Mike, for the winning time? I think it probably will be, in fact, just over, uh, maybe just late 28, 28.45 to 29 almost. When you look at all the athletes in the field, they're all wearing glasses which is sensible in these temperatures, except one, and that's uh, Justina. She is not, uh, and she doesn't normally, but on this descent here, you can see her eyes blinking in the very clear pictures that we have. Maybe not quite so bad uh, in a race this short, but certainly anything longer than this, and uh, wear your glasses, and that sl r slows the rate of dehydration as well, so there are lots of factors involved. But she really has to, in these cold temps, or in the wind speed coming down the descent, you really have to blink. It's a little stressful, uh, but that's what she normally does. Maybe she didn't pick up a, a sponsor for the glasses, surely. Oh, I'm sure there'll be many want to be associated with Justina Kowalczyk. So just 40 seconds separating the top 20 
at the moment, but you can see how it's split itself into groups and uh, Kowalczyk, the lone figure, approaching the top of the first rise and then still a strong, strong pack of chasers and uh, they need to work together. V. Becker Skofterud still there is her first elusive victory going to uh, come to today. I'm not sure it will unless something goes drastically wrong with uh, Kowalczyk, but it would be nice to see her get a win. It would be brilliant to see her win, and uh, she's now just beginning to get uh, her pace, her feeling, and I think she's going to separate a little by the top of the, the big climb. Here's uh, Kowalczuk just coming up towards the top of the bridge. Some of the Canadian athletes, uh, 14 Canadian athletes in the field today, just going back under the bridge, so almost a kilometre behind. Well, we said we'd see if uh, any of the locals have ha how they're doing, Mike. Uh, numbers 56 through to 66. Uh, they're certainly not in that leading group, but uh, going through 6.6 .6 kilometres, we'll try and find some of the uh, leading club skiers here today. We've got uh, Brittany Webster from Canada, wearing 53. And we've got 64, which is Anne-Marie Camo, doing pretty well in 46th position. She's only given away a couple of minutes, two minutes, on those first two laps. So that's very respectable for a club, club athlete, bearing in mind that uh, all the national athletes are on full-time training. Goftrud on the far side, Keegan Randall looking for yet another podium finish. Randall lying in second place for the uh, for the World Cup standings at the moment after six races, and she's wearing bib number one due to the absence of Marit Bjurgen, the World Cup leader. Welcome back to Canmore. The noise of the baskets on the snow giving away the fact that the temperature is uh, around minus seven, minus eight, getting a little bit colder. And because of that, uh, the crystals, the snow crystals getting that much sharper, that much slower to ski on. Number 14, we haven't seen uh, Anne Kiloinen so far today, Mike. That's uh, a good move from her. She really is now beginning to get her rhythm. She's been there or thereabouts in this top 10, but deciding to, to take the pace, try and lead this chase pack on. Are they going to close him, Kowalczyk? I don't think so. I think Skofterud has just responded to Kloinen's move. Number 22 is uh, Ingvild Osterberg of uh, Norway. She's still there. Keegan Randall looked to me as though she was starting to struggle a little. That fluent technique uh, deserting her. And uh, one or two others, Shevchenko included, starting to pay the price for, for that burst on the second lap. Yes, as soon as you alter your pace, uh, trying to take yourself above the, the comfort, the the feeling at which point you can still maintain the technique. She is suffering now from trying to stick with Kowalczuk. Kilonen's now uh, really beginning to step it up. When you've got, when you think, Patrick, now we're only, what, 500 metres away from the first of the two long recoveries or downhill sections. I think this is really sensible racing. Yeah, you might as well go hard at this stage because they'll recover very quickly at the top. Usberg is the first of three Norwegians, followed by uh, Mike and Faller. Only done one race so far, and actually finished second in Quebec in the sprint event there. So that was a good race by Faller, and uh, she's obviously on very good form. How do the Norwegian women, what's their secret, Mike? Uh, it, it's not unusual for a nation to have one top skier like Kowalczyk or Charlotte Kalla for Sweden, but they just have a mass, a busload of, of women all capable of finishing in the top three or four. I think it's partly history, isn't it? And of course, with Marit Björgen uh, now being the best cross-country skier ever, she's ahead of Jon Darley in the amount of victories. Uh, she's up over the 50 mark now, no problem. And, and I think she's helped gel this Norwegian team over the last eight, 10 years. It, and it creates its own momentum when you've got success like uh, Marit Björgen, the younger athletes, see themselves as being able to do that as well. So over the top of the climb for the last time for Kowalczyk, 1,700 metres to go, and about 15 and a half of those are downhill, so surely she's got this one in the bag. You can see the margin yourself. The chasing group uh, have swallowed up Kiloinen, and now we have, uh, I think it's one, two, three, four Norwegians and a Finn. 
And in fact, no, I take that back. Kilainen has broken away from the Norwegian, so she's done exceptionally well. Apologies for that. It's Keegan Randall mixed in amongst the uh, Norwegians, and she'll be fighting for a podium finish here tonight, and she's very quick. We saw her in the sprint. We've already seen her on the podium three times this year. She's had a first, a second, and a third. Best season ever for an American on the World Cup, and uh, we'll see how she gets on. And, uh, number 32 just coming out of sight there. It's... Uh... Virginia De Martin Topran and uh, very good for Italy, very good for her with the World Championships coming up at the end of February. She's having a very, very credible race today. Kicking Randall slowly just getting past uh, two of the Norwegians there. When you look at the backdrop here, it and in terms of training, every time I've been over here for training, it's the most, it's the most perfect place to train. The, the village, the town of Canmore, it's, it's growing and growing each year, but it's, it's wonderful. The Americans come and train here as well. I know uh, Keegan Randall lives up in uh, Anchorage, but uh, they, they have their own conditions, but they also have very cold conditions. They do, and certainly this is in the summer, all this is uh, asphalt, roller ski tracks. The, of course, for biathlon, there's a 30-lane range. It's they're just some of the best facilities for training. And you're, you're at mild altitude here, 1,400 metres, and that has all the benefits as well. Well, there's only one more podium place up for grabs because Kowalczyk has sealed her first uh, win of the season, surely with the performance she's put in so far. Second uh, earlier on in the season in the stage world cup in kusamo i think uh, kibalchik was happy enough with that but blown away really by marit bugen who was on such tremendous form kiloinen excellent run from her and the best we've seen from a finn so far this season she surely is uh, safe in second place and here are the five women vying for that third position and Keegan Randall has moved up alongside the lead norwegian skofter and has put herself in the perfect position to challenge The last technical corner and certainly scoped for mistakes but all five safely round and now they head down towards the stadium. 100 metres to go for Justina Kowalczyk, about 200 now for Kalloinen and it's a long easy double pole, the big grin spreads across Kowalczyk's face because she notches up yet another victory. The three-time winner of the overall World Cup has got a 22nd victory on the World Cup Tour, and that takes some doing. Kalainen, certainly a PB for her. Great time as well. 14 seconds outside Kowalczyk. Now the sprint for the line, and it looks, uh, Mike, which one is, is it? Fowler who's come through. I think Fowler is the one who saved the most for the finish. Skofterud's going to be down in fourth place, so Norway three, four, and five with Osterberg, and Keegan Randall nothing to give in the closing stages. She takes six, and Steyr of Norway in seven, ahead of Dematan Tropinin. That's a good race from the Italian in eighth place. She must be happy with that. Shevchenko, well, she put in an early flop and uh, well maybe that was her downfall down in ninth place now and Ishida gets uh, a creditable tenth place but she will have been dreaming of better things last night hoping hoping that she would finish on the podium Gashina is the first of the Russians finishes just ahead of Rocheva and then uh, they start pouring in Kazava coming in in 13th place and down in 15 is Iksanova as well so the Russians are there in numbers but still, in a relay, you would still fancy the uh, Norwegians to win with the strength they've shown today. And a hog of Sweden down in 16, 1 minute 18 off the pace. And a tired looking Denise Herman crosses the line in 19th position. Well, that's the first of two races today. The men going over 15 kilometers. They've got a slightly longer loop, Mike, and uh, going four times round to make up a distance of 15 kilometers. Sergeant in 
31st for USA behind Holly Brooks. Uh, after their start in uh, Yelavari, I think the two Americans might be a little bit disappointed with the way things have gone, and they'll be disappointed that their teammate, Keegan Randall, hasn't uh, finished in the top three today. But still a, a much better show than we've seen in previous years. Norway still by far and away the strongest nation. Definitely the... Um well, the five Norwegians in the field, they've got third, fourth, fifth, and, uh, and a seventh place. Well, I wonder what uh, Marit Bjorgen's thinking sitting at home, Mike. Do you think uh, she now knows that uh, Kowalczyk is going to give her a race? I think so, and I was in my own mind, as, we, as, as Kowalczyk went round for the third time, I, I thought, I wonder where uh, Bjorgen would be in this one, probably with Kowalczyk, but I think Kowalczyk would have... Well, maybe matched her or beaten, beaten her today. Yes, yeah, certainly a, a course that suits the pole Kowalczyk and she has taken the win. 28.58, her winning time. Let's have a look at today's winner. An easy race. The work was done on the second lap. She stretched the field on that second lap and then uh, gave herself an advantage of what 60 70 meters at the start of the third and uh, they never looked like closing it to be honest it's a difficult gap to to close and Dekovalchi really did put the sprint in to pick up the 15 extra points and from that moment onwards she managed to get rid of the rest of the field I thought Russia might do better today Patrick but uh, well the best of the Russians just confirm I think two in the top ten in fact, further back than that, 11th and 12th, the Kachina and Rocheva. In fact, the youngest and then the oldest of the Russians, one behind the other. Kachina, 23, Rocheva, 34 year old now. Uh, 52 across the line remember we had 66 starting now just trying to do some calculations Mike uh, I think Keegan Randall will still be in second place in the World Cup standings after today's effort we know that Kowalczyk picks up 100 points so she goes on to 360 for the total for the year but Marit Bjorgen despite the fact that she didn't race in Quebec and she's not racing here today is still sitting pretty on 450 maximum points for Marit Bjorgen she hasn't been beaten so far this year and I wonder how long she'll keep that record going incredible five races and Marit Bjorgen although not here she won all five of them but this will give Kowalczyk hope uh, in the sprint tomorrow, she may well, uh, sorry, on Saturday, may well place up there. Daria Beatty just coming across the line from Whitehorse Cross Country Ski Club. And uh, that's not a bad time at all. 5.06. It's all about percentages behind the winner. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave you to work that one out, Mike. But uh, five minutes on it's 29 six, minutes. 16%. 17 possibly that's just off the top of my head which is good racing and to make uh, the national teams generally you need to be able to crack that 10 percent mark maybe even, uh, and if you want it if you want a chance of uh, finishing in the top or the world cup points the top 30 you're looking at five percent five percent or even less um today i'm just thinking uh, kicking randall she was lined she lined herself up for our third position coming into this final 100 and then she dropped down three places down to sixth that's just it i think she selected the uh, wrong lane actually there was a, a, a straighter a quicker wave which had been skied on before well i was just wondering whether you were your observations early on that she had slightly slower skis and that wouldn't have helped on this finish because it's a 200 meter downhill or more than that into that flat section to finish and if your skis aren't gliding well you are not going to hold off a load of norwegians and she failed to do so on this occasion whistling through the result sheets uh, i'm afraid but i'm sure you know the top three kowalczyk kloinen and of course uh, mike and Faller for norway further down uh, just looking any names you may be familiar with. ingmar's daughter's been on the tour for a while she gets 27th today and holly brooks it is who picks up yet another world cup point so there is some consolation down in 30th either Sargent, on the other hand just missing out 159 behind Malvaletto of Finland. That's uh, a below par performance for her. She'll definitely be disappointed with that. And the uh, Ukrainian Marina Ansibor is capable of top 20, but she's not shown it today.
Well, Justina has her fans uh, right the way across the globe. And uh, she can now go back to the hotel, put her feet up and just look at the view while the men go through the paces because the men have got a race over 15 kilometers uh, this afternoon okay. meet, and meet uh, we'll be back for not. that event. It's just over 40 minutes time. It will be fast and furious. The Italians have done well here in the past. Well, they see 2020, so uh, it's 1920, 20 minutes past seven if you're watching in the UK. Any favorites for the second race of the day? It's going to be tough. Uh, Jontrud soon be uh, wearing big bib number one. They'll all be lining up to chase him, but there are many out there uh, who, who really will give the give him a, a good run for his money. Well, these are all the uh, young members of the local club. Justina Kowalczyk, congratulations, your amazing performance. How difficult was it to win today? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was really great for me because the ski was working perfect. I really liked this track and uh, my body was really good today. You went away in the middle uh, of the competition at approximately five kilometers. Was it your tactic? Was it planned like this? Uh, yeah, well, this was one step of, of my tactic. Um, after the bonus second, uh, go fast and nothing more. We have two competitions left here. What are your plans for them? Uh, actually, I don't know what will happen uh, in the sprint skating, but I will be fighting. Um, but uh, duathlon is the uh, next goal for me. Thank you very much and once more congratulations. Thank you. Don't give away too many secrets, uh, Justina. Interesting though, Mike, uh, she went for the sprint and then decided to capitalize on the lead, just as you suggested she might do. So Justina Kowalczyk wrapping up a win number one for the season. That's her 22nd career win. There will be more this year. You can almost guarantee that. And the, the classic races are where she does so well. So half an hour or so for the men's 15 kilometer. We'll see you then. Goodbye for now.